Okay, students, let's make a hummingbird feed. What do you say? All right, here's what you're going to need. I'm going to angle my camera down. And I have a small ball jar, a little bit of wire. You could also use twine. This is a ball jar lid, okay? I have a half, uh, sorry, a fourth a cup of sugar <clears throat> and a full cup of water, okay? Because I have to have one part sugar to four parts water. I also have this really lovely drawing of flowers, okay, and some red paper and glue. And I'm going to use those things to decorate my my uh, hummingbird feeder so that it looks like a flower, so that it will attract the hummingbirds, and then they will hopefully put their little beaks in the holes that I've created on this lid, which you should ask your parents to help you create some holes in the lid of your ball jar. And then they will put their little beaks in there and eat. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix my sugar with my water, okay? And mix it up. All right, I'm going to angle this down so you can see. And really good so the hummingbirds can taste it, right? Mm -hmm. All right. It takes a couple minutes to make it kind of all dissolve in there. Yep. And then I'm going to set it aside until I'm ready to go. Meanwhile, I'm going to cut out some of these pretty flowers. I don't know where they came from, but they're just some old craft paper that I have laying around. And I thought, what the heck, these are beautiful flowers. Hummingbirds like flowers, and they like color. So hopefully they'll like these flowers. So I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to sort of look at it on this. And I need to cut it more. So I wrapped it around. I'm going to cut more. Now you could do this with red tape if you had it. It really doesn't have to be flowers. It can be kind of anything, okay? And then for the top, I'm going to cut, I'm going to put this down, the lid cap. I'm going to make a trace around it, okay? I'm going to make the whole, whole top red because hummingbirds really, really like red. Okay, and then once I get this lid done, I'm going to look for the holes that I punched in my lid already. I'm going to glue this on. And I'm going to look for the holes that I punched in my lid already. Okay. And I'm going to make holes in uh, the paper. Okay. So that hummingbirds, like I said, can stick their little beaks in there and get the sugar water that we've created, which is kind of like nectar. Mm -hmm. So now you can see I have four holes in the top of my lid, and I took my tacky glue and I glued this red paper on so that, like I said, the hummingbirds will be attracted to that. And I started to glue on around my ball jar this really nice paper with these flowers on it, because this can also be attractive to our Hummingbirds, they love flowers, as we talked about. And so I glue this around like so. It doesn't have to be perfect. Hummingbirds respect effort. And there we go. Okay, now this is super attractive to hummingbirds, right? There's red, there's flowers. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my sugar water in. Okay. I'm going to take my lid, put it back on. And then I'm going to take my wire, okay, and I'm going to put it around the bottom of my hummingbird feeder, and I'm going to attach it on this side, okay. Now, again, you can use twine for this. Okay, doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be wire if you don't have any. Twine will work. Just something to hang it with. And you can be creative about it too. Okay, and then I'm going to take it, put it all the way around here. Okay, and I'm going to fasten it together like so. And then you have. Hummingbird feeder. Hard to, hard, it's hard to cut video yourself.
So now I'm going to take it outside and see if I can attract some honey hummingbirds. TV roll bird feeders. Here's what you're going to need. You're going to need Crisco shortening or peanut butter, twine, bird seed, TV rolls. That's about it. Okay, so students, the way to bring big birds to your yard, birds that are going to actually eat seeds, and like I said in my, in my seesaw project, uh, instructions poop them out or accidentally drop them on the ground so that they'll sprout new flowers and new plants, is to try to attract them into your yard. You need some bird feeders, okay? So I'm going to show you how to make some really easy bird feeders, all right, from TV rolls. You need TV rolls. You need Crisco or peanut butter. Or both. I'm going to try both just because I wanted to kind of see which one the birds will like the best. And you need some bird seed. Turns out they have it at Ralph's. It's parakeet seed, but I don't think the birds are going to discriminate in free food world, right? Because I don't. Okay. <clears throat> and you need some twine of some sort. Okay. Let me show you what to do. So, first, I'm going to take the twine, like so, and I'm going to put it through the toilet paper roll, all right? And I'm gonna tie it. It's just that easy. I'm gonna tie it in a knot. You can tie it in a bow. Just make sure it's secure so that it will hold a bird when they land on it to eat, okay? So there we go. There's one, all right? Here's the other. I'm gonna tie it. Probably wanna leave some room for the bird to land on this little toilet paper roll. So not tying it down, right? Because this is how it's gonna hang on the tree, like that, or the bush or whatever you have. Ooh, I'm trying so hard to get it in my camera. There we go. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take toilet paper roll number one. I'm gonna smother it in peanut butter. And it smells good, I love peanut butter. I'm the happiest peanut butter eater ever. I love peanut butter ice cream. It's my favorite. I love peanut butter cookies. I'm sure I would love peanut butter pie, although I can't remember when I've had it. I'll probably have. I'm really old. I have a lot of things to eat. And then I also love peanut butter cake. And I like to strip peanut butter, too. I'm going to slather it in peanut butter. And then I'm going to roll it in my bird seed. Okay, so I'm going to put a lot of bird seed on there. There we go, there we go. All right, this one's done. As you can see, my nice little bird feeder. Okay, then it's kind of like what we do with our dog. We smother a bone in peanut butter, that guy loves it. Then I'm gonna try Crisco, which is just baking lard, really. It's oil, condensed down to lard. I'm gonna put it all over my second toilet paper roll. I'm sure everybody's got some toilet paper rolls sitting around, right? Because we've been in COVID-19 for a long time. We've been using toilet paper at home. And I'm sure we've got some toilet paper rolls. Maybe if you don't have twine, you could just use string from the kitchen. You could really use anything just as long as you, it can hold it up. That's the whole point. And you can smother it. There we go. And then same thing. Roll it in the bird seed. There we go. Now I'll tell you what from this is my first experience with this project and I'll tell you right now that the Crisco does not quite hook up the bird seed like the peanut butter did it really. So here's what I've got now. One bird feeder, two bird feeders. I'm gonna go outside and see which one they like. Here's an urban garden update. First, the tree by the auditorium has these great apples I wanted you to see. I'm sure you know that they grow every year, but they're beautiful. So let's head to the garden. A lot of things are happening there that you're gonna see. There's big changes and it's really flourishing. Welcome back. Now you can see over by the compost area, there's a lot of growth. 
not just in the bed there, but also on the ground. Look at this squash. I had to put a trellis up for it to grow on. There's so much squash. These beds have really flourished, like I was saying before. There's so much produce there. I've been able to harvest a lot of food, radishes, tomatoes, uh, lots of lettuce, parsley, herbs, and share them with other people from Larchmont Church School who needed herbs and things to make dinner. Hugo's used some of it in the food that he's making with the to-go meals. Lavender's beautiful. You can see the trees are growing really well. There's even some apples on our tree there and the lemongrass as well. It's just become really, really beautiful here. And I could, I wish you guys could see it in person, but I'll try to explain it even more. Let's see some other things in the garden. This bed has tomatoes and peppers growing in it, as well as that big group of kale. See here, these little cherries and these little peppers. I think they may be serrano peppers, but I'm not sure. This fig tree actually has about two or three figs on it which are delicious with some prosciutto. Can't wait for that. This bed needs to be planted, so I'm gonna put some corn in it and try for some things for fall. And here's Chewy's habitat. It's growing really well. And here's some artichokes. There's four of them. There were five the other day. We took one off. But the flower garden is beautiful right now. You can see the <coughs> sweet peas and um, these big sunflowers, which I'm gonna put stakes on so they don't fall over. And these pretty little blue flowers are so so lovely. I made a little bouquet. Um, this bed has tons and tons and tons of tomatoes in it, and it also has some watermelon radishes, although we've harvested most of them. There's been plenty. Like I said, we've been sharing with other LCS families and folks that are at, have been at school working. Again, more tomatoes. We're going to have a lot of tomatoes. See, they're so beautiful. They're starting to come in, the cherries and the big ones. There's some <coughs> really big big tomatoes coming as you can see and this is the Meyer lemon tree it's got a bunch of lemons on it delicious can't wait to eat those this just squash just took over I don't even know who planted the squash but it's really taking over you can see the blossoms the peas are dying out the lettuce is dying out but that squash is taking over I assume there's going to be a lot of them and here's the squash from the compost area it's the biggest one we have the worms still thriving you can see a few of them in here and the lettuces are about ready to get harvested. I'm going to think of something else to put in there. I can't wait to see what sprouts up next.